Hello, welcome to episode 9 of the Autumn Poppy Designs podcast. My name is Paula, and this is predominantly a knitting podcast. I'm sorry, I spilled coffee somehow. Uh, shh, it's okay. Um, but yeah, <laughs> welcome. Thanks for joining me. Um, if this is your first time, hello. I hope you enjoy the podcast and stick around um welcome to any returning viewers thank you so much for being here and uh yeah um i know it's been a little while but i haven't really been i've been knitting a lot but it's all mostly on my own designs so there really hasn't been much to share with you but I've recently cast on a whole bunch of stuff. So yeah, I figured might as well catch you up a bit. So yeah, I'm just gonna take a swig of coffee. Um, it is like two o'clock in the afternoon and the kids just went down for their nap and I only had one cup this morning and I'm really feeling the need for another one. So, also check out this awesome mug. I uh, picked it up at Michael's a couple days ago, and it is amazing. Um, <laughs> it's massive, but it's a white pumpkin. And I like the little speckles on it. And... A regular size cup of coffee goes to about here in it so I think it's gonna get cold real fast anyway let's get started so I have a finished object and this one took me all of like two days to knit because I was improvising and not a design but I have the instructions written down in case I did want to turn it into one but there you go this is a hat I made for Penny she doesn't really have a fall hat anymore because she's outgrown all of them since last fall when she was all of like Two months so yeah I uh, I made this one for her so I did a pico edge which I love and so because I did the pico edge it's a double brim so you can see my uh, my join I guess um, and then it's just straight knitting and then I really like the way I did the crown I think it looks really cute makes it look kind of like a little flower um, but yeah so what I did is I had a leftover yarn from one of my other hats and so I held two strands of um, fingering weight yarn it's a uh, oh sorry my nose is really itchy right now um, so it's two strands of knitting for olive um, in the uh, I think it's just called merino just like I don't even I don't even have one of the tags on me anymore but it's a uh, knitting ball of merino it's a hundred percent merino um, yeah they're they're 50 gram balls so I had yeah so I had two uh, left over two balls left over of um, it was like 23 and 24 grams so I ran out of the pink just at the end and I had just enough of the white to finish it so I uh, just held the white double to get it all done and I think it looks kind of cute and uh, I was thinking about putting a pom-pom but I don't know she looks just cute and it's just the way it is so 
I just leave it. But yeah. That was a really long-winded story about this hat that, you know, I like it. It's cute. It, uh, it did not take very long, like I said. Um, and yeah, that's all there is to say about that. I'll, um, uh, I'll try to put up a Ravelry, Ravelry project page, but, um, like I said, there's no pattern for this. I might not make one. I could. If there's any interest, I could definitely put it out as a pattern, but I feel like there's a lot of um, patterns out there that do the broom like this, so I'm sure you could find something. Um, yeah, that's... I have... I guess I could just go ahead. Um, the other thing that I finished was my design, which is this giant wrap. I haven't blocked it yet because um, my husband decided to use my blocking mats. Okay, we had two sets of mats. Um, they're uh, they're the uh, kids' floor mats. They're just like the uh, foam interlocking mats. Um, anyway, we got two sets of them from Canadian Tire like two years ago now. And the one set that I was using for my blocking mats when we were living at our old place is now used as flooring in the storage room in the basement. So those are gone. Um, and then uh, the other set we had, we were using for Theo for the floor at our old place for him to crawl around on and play because we didn't have um, a rug. And the space was really awkward to put in a rug. So we were using those. And then when we moved to here, again, he put them in the basement in the storage room as flooring, but I could easily take them out and put them back if I needed to. Um, and then, over the summer he decided to put them out in the yard on the asphalt where their um, uh, where the water table is and use it as like extra co ground cover for Penny mostly because she was always barefoot in the backyard which was fine I did not mind it at all it was great but then I was out of blocking mats completely so um, I finished this thing and I had no blocking mats. So I still needed to run the test knit because I want to release this mid-October and if I didn't start it right away then I, everything would fall behind and it was just going to be a mess. So um, the test knit is going, everything is fine and I just went out yesterday and I bought the blocking mats. So. Um, there's, yeah, so I have four giant mats and I'm really hoping they will be enough to block this thing, but because it is like, it is wide and it's probably going to block wider than it is now, but it is very long. I can show you maybe, yeah, it's pretty long. And so... Yeah, and I mean, I have a huge lace section right in the middle here that is definitely going to grow quite a bit. But as of right now, it's about, it's taller than me, or longer than me, I guess. But yeah. So, anyway. <laughs> this, I've shown this a few times now, but it is finally finished, and I'm so happy, and I hustled and hustled like crazy, so I will show you in slow motion of the whole thing. Um, so we have, we start right here and there's garter increases in two colors. And then I have this eyelet section here and this really fun bubbles bobble section and then another eyelet section and a lace section. And then it just repeats and then it decreases back down to the point. 
So yeah, that is that. The, um, we were supposed to, I guess be, they are going in different directions, so it's gonna, the two ends are gonna look different, but you can uh, block them out easily to get them into the shape you want. Plus, it's a little fun being different. Because what would the fun be if it was identical? But yeah, I like it. I like it a lot. And I love the colors. And it's uh, Crooked Kitchen Yarn. She is a local dyer here, right, in, right here in Cambridge with me. Um, I had the pleasure of meeting her a couple times. It's not a collaboration. I uh, purchased her yarn two years ago, I think it was, at the KW Knitters, Fat, Knitters Fair in the hopes of knitting a different shawl and still haven't knit that shawl and definitely use the yarn for something else, as you can see. So yeah, I regret nothing because this is beautiful and it is very autumnal and I love it and I just really like this color so it's uh the brown is uh just rusted enough or maybe it's just rusted i don't know um then there's plush and then there's maple buds and i love all the speckles in it and yeah so that is now in testing and I'm hoping to release it, like I said, mid-October, so I think it's like um, the 17th, I think I said. So yeah, um, moving on. I uh, The year of socks cal is still going until the, um, well, December will be the last month that I put out a sock pattern for it but um, I released September's on September 1st. And um, um, where is all this hair coming from? I'm so sorry. Anyway, um, September 2nd, I released the pattern and here it is. I know I'm always late for everything with these things, but so the There's just this leaf motif right on the front. Actually, I shouldn't say the front. It's not right on the front. It's off center, but the sides of it kind of makes it feel like it's in the middle. There, maybe you can see it better now. So it's got bobbles. So uh, I like it. I think it's really pretty. It's really fun to do. Um, it's kind of very meditative and addicting, I thought anyway. I had no problem knitting the second sock. It went so fast. But the uh, yarn, which I think I've talked about this already, getting kind of a sense of a deja vu here, is um, botanical fibers. Um, she is a dyer from I'm gonna say Nova Scotia because I can't remember but yeah so she used sumac and goldenrod and it's um, indigo for the blue and yeah I really like it kind of micro striped but yeah it's really pretty it's really really pretty and it's nice and thick um, it's thicker yarn for sure and it, uh, it's very warm and they're just, they're just lovely. So yeah, um, there's still time to enter for September if you'd like. The, uh, cow goes until the very last day of September and, uh, I draw prizes on the first. Big windows are very distracting. Um, but yeah, I draw prizes on the first and, uh, yeah, depending on the amount of people enter, 
I usually do one or two. I've been doing one, mostly because there's only been like a handful of people who actually put in their entries. So yeah, if you, um, honestly, if you just cast on and knit like a little bit of the leg, you're qualified to enter. Um, you don't have to use the same yarn at all. In fact, she's already sold out of kits. Um, but I highly recommend you check her out. She's got beautiful yarn, beautiful colors. Everything's naturally dyed. It's just fantastic. And it's so soft. It's so soft. But yeah. You can see her tag. It is hanging on my wall right there. That's okay. I'll put the information in the description box below if you're interested. Um, and yeah, so I'm gonna have another sip of coffee and, and then we'll talk about um, works in progress. Because I have just two really, but um, Actually, it's more like three, but I can only show you two. So, first one, and I've shown this on my uh, Instagram, is my Felix pullover. This is, there we go, this is the front, right here, this is the front. It is such a beautiful pattern. It's very simple. It's just got these beautiful raglan increases here. And um, that's it. That's like really the only interesting thing about the pattern is these beautiful raglan increases. It's a little cropped. Um, I don't know, I can't remember if I got extra yarn to um, make it longer or not, but we'll see. I, uh, I've split for the sleeves and I'm just knitting away on the body and uh, the pattern does call for um, let low be yeah let low be um, which is see I've knit with let low be and it's a weird one because it's it's got a bit of a thick and thin texture to it in some areas so it's Erin, but it can also be closer to a DK in some parts. So she's listed it as Erin, and with the gauge she got, um, she used US 10 needles. So um, I think it's 14 stitches per, in, uh, per four inches is the gauge, and I pretty much got that with this. Um, but as you can see, it's the fabric's like, very airy but I love it I absolutely love it I'm so happy with it it is so soft um, I should mention that I'm using Cascade 220 in the uh, golden rod golden rod color um, and it's yellow I love yellow I don't know what it is it's just so bright and it's so happy and it makes me happy. It's, I love it. And like, my bag is awesome too. I have all of the coffee stains on it because Penny, just because Penny, that's really it. She did it. And I can't tell you where this is from because I bought it at Woolstock in Woodstock. Um, like two years ago and the girl that made it she doesn't have a tag or an Etsy shop or anything she just she just sewed a bunch of bags and they're absolutely amazing it's excuse me it's got such a huge like a thick lining very thick lining and I'm sure I've gushed about this bag before because it's fantastic but anyway so I'm on my second skein it's yellow, it's happy, it's soft. I'm actually using US 9 needles uh, because 
Well, that's what I get a gauge with. And if I went up to the US tens, the fabric would be way, way too airy, way too, um, it would have been practically see-through. So yeah, that's really all I have to say about that, I think. I have five skeins of Cascade 220s, so I'm hoping, I'm hoping I can make it a little longer. Yeah, we'll see. Once I finish that ball, I'll go on and knit the sleeves, and then I'll make the sleeves full length, and once those are done, then I'll go and just keep knitting the body until all the yarn's gone. Yeah, that's kind of what I've been doing lately, is running out a ball of yarn, working on the sleeves until they're done, and then I know exactly how much I have for the body so I don't run out. And then I can really get the sleeves to be the length that I want, because Last couple of times I knit a sweater, I've did I done them like um, bracelet length, so they'll be like here. I don't like that. I really do like my sleeves to be super super long. So yeah. Um, the next thing that I have on my needles that is so close to being done, I'm so excited is. Um, Theo's birthday sweater. Oh, I should mention, I cast that sweater on hoping to finish it for my birthday, but now I don't think that's gonna happen because my birthday is on the 7th of October and we have like two weeks to get there. And I need to finish Theo's sweater first because his birthday is on the 6th. Yeah. Um, so, uh, Crooked Cabin Creations on Instagram posted that she had made these bags. Actually, that's a lie. She posted this bag plus this other one that she had done. And uh, she said that she's thinking about reopening her Etsy shop and listing bags like these and I lost it. I needed it. So I messaged her and I was like, please tell me I can have this bag. Like, tell me how much money you want. Tell me what the shipping is and I will take it. So she let me buy it off of her. But yeah, just the cutest bag you've ever seen. It makes me so, so happy. So yeah, it's this bag. And inside I have Theo's jumper, which I know it looks kind of wonky right now, but that's just because I literally just joined the sleeves and I'm using like <laughs> the worst stitch holders. But yeah, so I am striping leftover yarn from his um, Christmas sweater. This is uh, Dove Heather. Uh, this is Midnight Heather, uh, Icicle Heather, and Persimmon. And yeah, I did, um, I did 12, 6, 12, 6, 12, 6, 6, because I was starting to really run out. And now I'm going to do 12. And so I'm just basically going to switch it up a bit that way. Um, yeah, I'm using the 1979 Raglan pattern by um, Summer Lee Knits. It's a really cute, basic Raglan um, she's got it sized for like a classic fit for adults, then she's got a relax relaxed fit. I don't know, one is like slim, one is boxy, and then she has the kid fit. So obviously I'm using the kid fit. Um, and yeah, I just love the way the striping worked out. It makes me so happy. Like I think it looks like amazing. Um, very autumnal makes me so so happy anyway 
Um, I'm using US 6. Uh, yeah, US 6 needles. I, uh, I did swatch. I did get uh, gauge with the sixes. Um, and I am using this. So yeah, I won't be able to put down exact yardage or grams or whatever that I used because I haven't been keeping track. So, sorry, but yeah. I'm knitting the three to four year size, I think, which Sadly, I'm now beginning to think it's going to maybe just fit him this year because despite turning three, he's wearing 4T already and has been for a while. Like, I looked up um, average height of a three-year-old and he's the average height of a five-year-old. So yeah, Penny is perfectly on track for her size and age, so... <laughs> That's good. Theo's gonna be a monster. And yeah. Um, so now I'm gonna show you the yarn for the um, mystery knit along that I'm posting over on Instagram. And I now have a Ravelry group. So if you wanna join that, I'll leave a link down below. Um, but yeah, I. Uh, I'm hosting this in collaboration with Charity from Brian Dye Works, and um, she's all sold out of the kits that she had put together for this. Um, it's the yarn that I used to create the pattern, but um, I'm going to show you anyway, just to give you, in case you want to join, just to give you an idea of what you need. So you need um, 50 grams of the of a main color. So this is what I used. And then you need four 20 gram skeins um, of four different contrasting colors. And uh, this is what I used. I'm gonna try and show them all to you at once. So there's this beautiful brown. It's very caramely. There's this. This one. And this one. So it's obviously kind of a striping sock. It's very scrappy in nature. Um, it's great for leftover yarn. And there's gonna be, um, I think I did five clues over 12 days, I think it was. Um, so there's gonna be a clue. The first clue goes live on October 4th. And then it'll be a new clue every other day. And then you'll have two weeks to finish the pattern after that, like to finish both socks. And then I will be drawing for prizes. I will um, release a picture of the finished sock, uh, socks. <laughs> and then, um, yeah, if you, um, if you click the link down below, you'll be able to find um, the Ravelry page with all the information that you absolutely need. Um, once you buy the pattern, you'll be sent an information sheet with even more information. So like you're very, very well prepared. And then, um, like I said, I'll be hosting it through my Ravelry group and my, um, and the Instagram. The Instagram, that sounds so stupid. <laughs> but yeah. So for those of people who don't want to, um, who don't want to or can't use Ravelry right now, I also have the pattern available in my Etsy shop. So you can head over there and purchase it. And that way I will just send you the clue release right to your email. You just have to include it when, when you purchase the pattern. Um, and yeah, there's, uh, yeah, I mean, all the information's there. I can't think of everything right now, but yeah, I think it's going to be a lot of fun. Um, in the Ravelry group, I'll be, um, I'll post a picture of the, like I'll put a separate board for every clue. So if people want to share pictures of what they've done and things like that, they can, um, without revealing 
the clues to those that don't want to see it um, or aren't ready to see it yet. Uh, yeah, it's fun. I'm excited. It's my first mystery in a long, so yeah. I haven't even, I don't think I've ever even participated in one. I bought the pattern for the stillness shawl mystery knit along that Helen Stewart hosted this year, but I didn't even knit it. I just, I didn't get a chance to. So still want to knit the shawl though. It's very beautiful. But yeah. Mm. I can, um, sorry. I can, uh, I'm going to show you the yarn for the October sock pattern. It's, um, it's coming out October 2nd and it's in collaboration with, um, Leo and Roxy Yarn Co. Um, I'll, um, blah, blah. <laughs> I'll put a link to their shop down below. And I will be posting an official sneak peek on my Instagram in the next couple of days. I'm just waiting on a reply from them. And then hopefully um, you can check them out and pre-order kits. Because they said they'd have those available for you. So the main color is this beautiful, as of right now, unna unnamed orange. I'm still knitting the second sock. So... The cake is a mess and it's a center pull, so I mean, it's just, but the orange is just, like I can't get over it. I really, really want a sweater in this. It's, uh, it's so tonal. It's got orange and brown and caramel and a little bit of red in it and it's just it's stunning, it's stunning. And then the contrast color is uh, it's called Copper Roof. And it's, it's a mess, but here it is. How beautiful is that? It's got just, like, it's just perfect. That's something else I need a cape, I mean, I need a sweater out of. It is just so, so pretty. So yeah, like I said, they'll have kits in their shop for pre-order, um, hopefully this week. Um, yeah. Yeah, there's not much more to say about that since it's still a secret until October 2nd, but I will be posting um, a sneak peek of the pattern um, of the socks and all that um, later this week. Yeah. Honestly, where did September go? Like, I, I last week, um, I thought it was the week before, if that makes sense. Like... Basically, it was the third week of September. I still thought it was the second week of September. So I don't even know. I don't even know. But I'm already super excited for October because I got this. So it's called Halloween at Hogwarts. It's from Area 51. And it's a 31 stripe Skein. So you get two, one for each foot, and then you get your contrasting mini. And I can't even. I've never had that many stripes in a skein of yarn before. I think the most I've ever had was six. <laughs> so I'm so excited. It's so awesome. It was, um, it's like a advent halloween kind of thing um but yeah i mean oh, look at this green i'm so excited i cannot wait to knit these socks and it came with the option of getting this sock sack it's from pine and pearl 
and you can buy their um, bags on their Instagram. Like you just have to send them a message that you want to buy it because they don't have an Etsy shop. They're thinking about starting one, um, and they um, you can buy some of their bags from Area Fifty One, and then other um, vendors. I think they have a listing on their Instagram page, so I'll link link them below. But they're so cute. They're just linen bags. They're really really nice, um, and I think they use a. I think it's like the cricket. Maybe that's not what they use, but it's basically the same thing. So, so cute. I've always wanted something with Dobby on it. Because he's adorable. Yeah. Um, last thing to share with you is these really cute stitch markers that I still have in the shop. Um, I'm hoping to do another update next week, maybe. I have so little time and there's so much I wanna do. So, I don't know, I just have to wait for the uh, supplies to come in, but I have this in the shop right now. I have this cute little bee progress keeper and stitch marker set. So it's a little bumblebee bronze and it comes with sorry it's so hard to it comes with this cute little apple blossom I'm calling it you can see it's a little and then it comes with these uh, bronze colored hexagons so I think you either get four or six of them I can't remember what I listed it as but yeah I think it's super cute. <laughs> and then I have the this uh, set of prog uh, wow, I have this set of stitch markers. They're also hexagons and they have little beads on them that really make me think of pumpkins. They make me so happy. So yeah. So those are also in the shop along with a few other things, but I wanted to show you those because those are my most autumnal things in the shop. Um, and yeah, that is everything I have to show you. Um, as for life stuff, we've been, we went apple picking. That was really fun. Um, it was my first time ever going apple picking, so I had a blast. Um, I tried, uh, I tried so many apples I hadn't even ever heard of. We ended up getting pears as well. So I'm hoping to make... Um, a... See, I was thinking of doing... Like, I've already made an apple crumble. And I did make a peach crumble too. Um, but I wanted to do something with the pears. And I was looking at various recipes, but... I found that you can make a pear bread and I am all about the fancy breads like I make banana bread once a week it's so good so I will be doing that and then apparently you can take the pears out and sub it for apples so that's happening and I still have two really big zucchinis in the fridge that I have to do something with so baking is happening this week for sure um, yeah, so I tried red quartz, amazing. I discovered Cox Orange, wow, those were so good. And I'm not a huge apple person, but I ate more apples at the uh, orchard than I'd eaten in like my lifetime. Um, yeah, we, the Cox Orange were so interesting. They weren't, you weren't supposed to pick them yet, but um, they were literally orange in color. Fantastic. Just like amazing. Um, and they were like a cross between an apple and an orange. No, Jesus. What am I saying? An apple and a pear. <laughs> that would have been so weird. Okay. 
So it's a cross between like an apple and a pear in texture and like taste and stuff. And it was so tasty. So tasty. Um, yeah. And I had Macintosh apples for the first time ever. Those were really tasty too. I do like those. Um, and then we talked to uh, Brandon's... Oh, that's Penny. Okay. We talked to Brandon's Oma and she got us... Um, she told us the proper apple pancake recipe, so we made those up. Amazing. I haven't had those in like seven years since my grandma made them for me. And uh, yeah, we've gone on one forest fall themed hike, which was really fun. I got Teddy to pick acorns and pine cones and stuff to bring home just to, just to have. <laughs> and uh, yeah. Yeah, that's really it. Um, my birthday and Theo's birthday is coming up, like I said, so I'm super excited for that. Um, and I gotta go. <laughs> so I hope you're keeping well. Um, and yeah, I'll uh, hopefully talk to you soon again. Bye.